Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome back to lecture 14 of Spatial Statistics and Spatial Econometrics. In this lecture, we are going to take up from where we left in the previous lecture that is variogram modeling. Up until now, we have defined a theoretical variogram. We have learnt how to develop a, a, an experimental variogram which is nothing but applying the idea of a theoretical variogram given a sample data. And where we ended our previous lecture was moving from this experimental variogram to a variogram model. Why do we need a model? And what is a model? Well, a model is a generic or a general representation of a real world phenomenon. And it typically relies on certain parameters of interest in the physical environment or the social environment that we are studying. Uh, it is only a representation of the real world. Of course, it does not capture all the uh, you know, complexities of the real world, but it will be able to provide us with a generic understanding of spatial dependence in space. Right? So, uh, you know, we, we looked at these figures that are in front of your screen. We were working with Uttar Pradesh data. We were working with uh, you know, uh, 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 lag vectors in the east-west direction. Right? We, we figured out a way to you know, work uh, or define lag vectors and search for uh, you know, spatial pairs uh, even when the data are spread on a, an irregular lattice. Right? And finally, we came up uh, with this variogram cloud which you know, provided us uh, with uh, you know, different uh, 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 you know, scatter plot values of z of s minus z of s plus h the whole squared right and for each h value that is on the x axis right for each h value we base we we collected we collect all the different points on the variogram cloud and we take a mean right that mean value is then collected for different h values provides us an experimental variogram okay now the point is we want to move from this experimental variogram to a generic understanding of spatial dependence in this region, right? What's the first thing that, that comes to our, you know, uh, an attention, uh, our attention when we move from this experimental plot to the modeled variogram of, uh, you know, uh, uh, understanding? Well, we have a variogram measure for specific values of h, which are represented by these red blocks, right? So we know at lag h1, h2, h3, h4, h5, and h6, we know exactly how spatial dependence, uh, you know, is exhibited in the sample data set. But we are, we really don't know what's happening on points between and other than these specific values of h, right? But uh, but that is sort of limiting, right? I mean, we, if we are to, if we are to, you know, uh, uh, conduct spatial prediction, spatial regression, then we should be able to have a model wherein we provide the value of h, and it provides me a measure of or a, an estimate of uh, the spatial dependence in my uh, in my uh, sample and spatial domain of interest, right? So, uh, in that spirit, we need a variogram model for all possible you know h values so to be able to exhibit spatial dependence provide a specific measure an estimate of spatial dependence for all h values we need a uh, you know uh, a variogram model the other alternative is to manually you know uh, calculate the experimental variogram value for each and every h value in every direction and every uh, distance uh, you know combination that is out there now that's really 
uh, non, uh, not really plausible, uh, you know, in practical terms, right? And the other thing that we will see through this through this lecture is that a generic model will allow us to incorporate additional drivers of spatial continuity besides just the space location and geography, uh, geographical, uh, you know, uh, 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 factors. Sometimes spatial continuity or spatial contiguity is also driven by anthropogenic factors. For example, if we think about urban areas and we think about groundwater levels, well, you know, because urban areas are typically highly concretized, there is going to be very little natural recharge due to rainfall because, you know, the most of the land area is concretized, right? So if we are studying recharge as a variable of interest over space, then perhaps urban areas will provide a factor that will drive a continuity of low recharge values over the entire urban area. This relative to other agricultural or non-urban areas where the recharge value is going to be spatially continuous and typically higher than the recharge values at urban areas. So anthropogenic impacts are important as well other than just the location indices that we have, uh, you know, that we have been thinking about seriously. An experimental variogram cannot provide us an op does not provide us an opportunity to characterize such nuanced you know uh, factors in defining spatial contiguity it's mostly dependent on location that is the lag vector h and it is done one h at a time right so apart from providing us a generic understanding of spatial continuity in space it also allows us to incorporate information that is beside space but can lead to spatial dependence or spatial contiguity in the data. In that, you know, in that series of arguments, you know, a variogram model will also be very useful for spatial interpolation or spatial kriging. All of this spatial dependence measures that we are uh, working out, uh, working with or, you know, uh, trying to work out is because, you know, typically when you sample in space, you know, you can't sample every single location in space. There are going to be locations where there are going to be no sample observations and using what you've observed, you've, uh, you, our job as statisticians is also to predict what's, what might be going on at areas that remain unobserved, right? Okay. So with that, let's move forward and study a few, uh, you know, variogram, uh, you know, models. So first up is the linear variogram model. Uh, you have the visual characterization of the linear variogram model. Let's start with the visual characterization. Well, uh, you have a typical sort of shape where the model, uh, you know, variogram uh, values as h increases, they go up, right? So on the right hand side corner, we have this experimental variogram, which basically shows that as h increases, the variogram values go up, right? So we can see our nugget effect, and we can also see that as h goes up, you know, the variogram values are increasing, but they are now increasing in a linear fashion. That basically gives us a shape of how the variogram values are progressing as h increases, right? This specific format or structure of evolution of spatial dependence as a function of h is where the modeling is coming at, okay? And it's coming with another parameter that is the slope of this linear, uh, you know, line which exhibits increase in variogram with one unit increase in h, right? This slope and the nugget together provide us a parameter vector theta that is C0 being my nugget, that is very near, just when we leave H, that is H approach is zero, but it's slightly positive, slightly away from any given location, what's the level of spatial dependence, right? That is C0, and after C0, B is, or BH is giving me the rate of decline in spatial dependence in space, right? This rate of decline is linear and, and constant as H increases. So we don't really get to see this, this, this point where 
the variogram stops increasing in the linear variogram model. Again, a model is an imperfect understanding of the real world. We know, we've seen examples of how in the real world you will see the variogram spatial dependence to eventually decline and that makes perfect intuitive sense, right? Uh, that is, values that are farther apart in space are likely to have, uh, you know, uh, uh, not so strong, uh, you know, correlation, okay? So let's look at the mathematical form of this linear variogram model. So linear variogram model is valid in a general d-dimensional real space and you know it's given as gamma h uh, colon semicolon theta equals 0 if h equals 0. So this respects the you know uh, uh, the theoretical property of a variogram that gamma 0 is 0 and when h is not equal to 0 that is there is a positive uh, you know a uh, 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 lag between two values uh, two locations in space their values will be dependent uh, due to this measure called c0 plus bl time h right this b is the slope at which uh, at which you know the variogram the spatial dependence is declining that is or alternative this variogram is rising as h increases right C0 is the nugget effect, right? C0 is the nugget effect. And, uh, you know, that is when h approaches 0, gamma h theta will be C0. So, moving away from a, an experimental variogram or rather a semi-variogram because we are working with gamma h and gamma h theta rather than 2 gamma h and 2 gamma h theta. So, I am using variogram and semi-variograms. Uh, you know, as 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 uh, interchangeable terms, but 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 I'm sure you know that you know two gamma h is called as a variogram conventionally, and if I remove this factor of two and work with gamma h, I'm talking about really the semi-variogram. Okay, so uh, here in this case, you know, the experimental variogram gave me values gamma h at each given lag, uh, you know, uh, uh, in space in my domain of interest, right? Uh, with the model, we have this another component of, you know, of, of theta. This theta, which is the parameter vector, is the basic differentiator between the experimental variogram and the modeled variogram. The beauty of theta is that if I figure out these theta values, if I figure out C0 and B, I can just provide a value of h and it could be any h, not just the ones that I have manually calculated my gamma h value for and I can back out my variogram, right? So that's the first strength that comes out, right? So if I have a parametric, you know, uh, definition, if I apply a parametric definition to the variogram itself, which sort of, sort of you know, in a, in a rather imperfect fashion provides me how gamma h or 2 gamma h will progress as, uh, you know, as it changes, that provides me a modeled variogram or a variogram model, okay? Now, there are several models for a, uh, you know, for a variogram, uh, for, to, 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 to sort of, you know, uh, 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 provide a generic understanding of spatial dependence in space. There are several versions. Linear is one, perhaps the most simplistic, a very good point to start in order to, you know, uh, uh, teach these uh, methods. The second on your screen right now, the second kind or second type of variogram model is called as the spherical model. The spherical model is valid in the one-dimensional, two-dimensional and three-dimensional, uh, you know, real spaces. Okay. Now, this is not, this is to basically say that the linear model was, uh, uh, was valid in a general d-dimensional real space. Here, we, if we are using a, uh, you know, spherical model, our data better be, uh, you know, in three dimensions or less, right? Which is powerful enough, right? I mean, most of the uh, work that we will do, especially for me as a social scientist, as an economist, you know, most data sets would form would fall in the category of in either in three dimensions and mostly in two dimensions, uh, okay? So what do we have now? Now, we have a situation where 
uh, you know we again have our nugget effect right uh, after right after we move from a given location that is the origin uh, uh, you know right after we move a step delta we get a certain value of gamma h which provides me an idea of the nugget effect after we have uh, you know after we reach the nugget effect and we still keep increasing our h value that results in increasing of gamma h value as well which again follows really well from you know uh, from what we have learned from experimental variogram and as well as from what we have learned from textbook uh, variogram theory right and that but the spherical model is able to also provide a pretty realistic picture of what we saw with the experimental variograms and the textbook variograms that is there will come a point after which after which I am going to have my variogram value stabilize to a given point right. So, the spherical variogram provides us a much more realistic picture of what is happening in the real world. Now, let us come to the mathematical formulation of the spherical variogram and focus on the parameters that allow us to move from the experimental or the calculation of a variogram manual calculation to a variogram model which is more generic such that we can simply provide the value of h, pass it in the model and it will provide me an estimate of what 2 gamma h should look like. Okay. Now again uh, I have my theoretical property gamma 0 equals 0 satisfied, so thumbs up. Second I have C0 for h between 0 and a value a s, it progresses with C0, C0 being the nugget effect plus C s times something in the in a, in, a, in a curly bracket minus half something else in, in another curly bracket. Okay. Um, it is a spherical uh, you know uh, uh, variogram, so you see that h has a cubic form uh, you know and it is declining uh, uh, with a uh, you know uh, 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 at a uh, cubic rate. So, there is something that is declining if h when h increases at a cubic rate in this uh, spherical variogram model. My theta space is now C0, uh, uh, Cs and As, right. Uh, now, if I pay attention h after uh, h greater than As is a constant value C0 plus Cs. Now, this is very close to what we have learned till now. After h crosses a value of a s right after h crosses a value of a s gamma has a fixed value of c 0 plus c s right c 0 plus c s. Now, this c 0 plus c s is what we know is our sil. So, what is c s? Well, C s is what we called as the partial sill. What is A s? A s is what we called as the range. That distance in space after which any two locations will not exhibit any uh, you know correlation. So, this sill is the point is the level of no spatial correlation in data. Okay? This spherical variogram is very, very close to uh, the textbook uh, variogram understanding that we, uh, that we have, right. And if you want to sort of visualize how the spherical variogram is really working, well, uh, it is measuring if you were, you know, uh, 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 if you were to visualize two spheres being put together exactly overlapping with each other. Um, and, and as you sort of start to move these spheres out, the, the, the level of inter, uh, you know as the, uh, the, the area that is intersection of these uh, that is between the intersection of these two spheres, it starts to decline. And as this starts to decline, that gives me a modeled understanding of decline in spatial dependence. That is what this function uh, between H uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 h being between zero and a s is uh, is providing mathematically. 
it's really the decline of area of uh, you know intersection between the two spheres as they are pulled apart from each other. It's a pretty interesting you know physical uh, interpretation of a uh, you know of a spherical model. That's why it's called a spherical model. Okay. In that spirit, there are couple more models which are popularly used. The one other one, the next one in, on your screen is called as an exponential model. Right. It looks much like a linear model only now there is a instead of a straight line I have a exponential decline I have an exponential decline in uh, you know spatial dependence in data and this rate of decline is where the exponent is going to come in. So, this exponent a e is going to be a parameter of rate of decline how quickly uh, will this uh, will this decline. Right? And as h approaches infinity, you will see that gamma h value will now start approaching to, you know, as h approaches infinity, gamma h will start to approach, sorry about that, approach C0 plus C e, which is nothing but the sill, that is the point of no correlation. So, exponential model exhibits a real world situation where values are spatially correlated even though they are very far apart from each other. Right? So, those if, if you have if you are working with a physical or a social phenomenon which, which exhibits that value in your spatial domain. Right? Remember all this analysis is being contained in a box which we call as the spatial domain. We have used the notation D for this spatial domain. Right? So, far apart enough would basically mean in this, in this circular spatial domain you know if values are at two different corners of the circle they are very very far apart and if you still believe if you believe that they will still exhibit spatial dependence uh, but that spatial dependence will will sort of you know decline very quickly as one moves away from any one location then perhaps the exponential model is the way to go instead if you believe that there will come a point after which there will be no spatial uh, you know relation in these data then perhaps the spherical model is the way to go. Okay? So, these things really matter uh, you know depend on uh, you know the kind of uh, real world uh, uh, you know analysis that you are conducting with the data. Right? Okay. Finally, there is another one called the quadratic model again its parameters will provide us where the nugget is, how far are we going to uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, 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 reach the sill, what is the rate of reaching there? The only thing is that one, once you start out from any given location, the decline, the decline is increasing uh, at an increasing rate. So, there is a, there is a convex function, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, right from this origin of this uh, variogram plot. So, the spatial dependence, uh, you know, shoots down very quickly after which it sort of stabilizes and then it you know decreases at a decreasing rate all right so it becomes a it becomes a concave function so if you have such a physical interpretation then perhaps a quadratic model will be better than the spherical model or the exponential model okay okay um, all right so now that we have you know uh, appreciated the value of uh, you know uh, 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 um, studying or representing spatial dependence through a model, more specifically a variogram model. Um, and we have seen some variants of these variogram models, the next step is to actually estimate this variogram model. And when I say that we are wanting, we want to estimate a variogram model, what we want to really estimate is uh, the parameters through uh, that is parameter vector theta that is the essence of the model right so gamma h is the experimental variogram whereas gamma h theta is the variogram model that is the modeled variogram right so when we say variogram model fitting we are basically coming to a point where we want to sort of you know uh, uh, learn learn the parameter vector theta from the given data data set or data sample okay so we start with a family of linear variograms 
right so so we we start with, again we started with the example of a linear variogram because it's very easy to understand it has only two parameters there's one is your nugget and the other is uh, you know uh, 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 other is your rate of decline in spatial dependence or the rate of uh, increase in the variogram value as h increases right so the value of linear variogram is given as the set of two gamma such that gamma h is equal to c0 plus b h where c is greater than or equal to 0 and so is b h right. So, again this is really a family of variogram why because c0 and b are both variables. So, it, as I change you know this pair c0 b as I as I insert different values of c0 and b in different combinations. I will start to get different different variogram models right linear variogram models right. Model fitting then is the concept where we are seeking an element from the above family that is closest to my given data sample. So, the linear, linear variogram model is providing me with a family of variogram possibilities. What I want to do is I want to figure out which among this this family of you know which member of this family is closest to my data set. That is I want to fix the values of c0 and b such that my variogram model c0 plus bh fits really well with the with the data. Now, the parametric subset of, of variograms which will do that are going to be 2 gamma such that 2 gamma h equals 2 gamma h and, and theta where theta is in the parametric space right. So, wherever my experimental variogram will match my modeled structure which is here c0 plus b times h right twice of this wherever this will happen I will simply get my variogram I will simply get my theta value right. Remember we saw that with h I have a variogram cloud. So, for every given value h I have different values uh, you know uh, uh, that are scattered in space. So, h 1, h 2, h 3, right h 4, right and so on and so forth. So, I really have a cloud and I have a modeled understanding of what will fit the mean value of this cloud at each value h. So, I am simply going to equate what this uh, you know at every h 1 I have a you know modeled value of uh, you know of 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 uh, of uh, you know of the variogram which at h 1 is going to be equal to c0 plus bh1 right. So, if 2 gamma which is the experimental value you know matches that that is the family of parametric variograms that we will say are the fitted variograms and the value of theta or b and c0 that if I can back it out from equating these uh, you know at every value of h those values of b and h uh, b and c0 are going to provide me fitted values of the variogram uh, model. Now, we have to find these theta with some goodness of fit criteria given a sample of spatial data over a stationary domain very very important if they if we were working with a non stationary domain well we will not really be able to you know uh, 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 you know define a variogram let alone, let alone estimating the parametric vector theta ok. So, so, so with this understanding so we are starting with a general family of uh, you know variogram models uh, you know uh, using the parameter vector then we are trying to match it with our data and try and trying to find a close fit. Now, in doing so there are several algorithms available most of these algorithms in fact all that we are going to look at in this in this lecture uh, or in this in this course are canned in a software. So, when you actually are trying to figure out the theta value that fits or that best represents your data set well you will do it on a software. 
However, in, in this lecture, you know, we will study the process of getting there, right? These algorithms that are in front of your screen are popular algorithms, uh, you know, in general. I mean, they are not restricted to just variogram modeling. Uh, maximum likelihood estimation, least squares estimation, and generalized least squares estimation are all very popular algorithms for achieving a good fit for any model and any given, you know, uh, data set. Here, in this case, we have a data set for 2 gamma h, right? For every value h, we have different values. We can, we can actually, you know, figure out the pairs, uh, you know, for each i comma j pair, you know, we have, we are going to have i1, j1, and so on and so forth, and we are going to have these values, the data that we have for 2 gamma h, right? For these values, we will then try and find the theta value which best represents what's happening with the data, right? So we have to, to be estimated is this theta vector and the algorithm such that the, you know, fitted values that is after we figure out the value of theta are close enough to the true, the values that are coming from the data set, you know, uh, in general, okay? So, you know, in the next part of this lecture, I'm going to, you know, go over these three algorithms in detail and, and hopefully after that, uh, variogram model fitting uh, will be, uh, you know, uh, will become very clear. Thank you and see you in the next part.